Hello friends. Welcome to this Thinker Views podcast where we share our book reviews with you. A book lover's life is filled with chance meetings and discoveries while searching for the next author to read. And the world today is such an exciting place when it comes to exploring the written word. If anything, there are sometimes too many choices. Here at Thinker Views, we are always amazed how sometimes an unexpected impulsive pickup in the library or bookstore leads to finding little treasures of stories. And that is how I discovered author Sujata Messi's books. She is a popular writer and won prestigious awards over the past few decades. But what caught my eye is her latest series featuring a young Indian woman solicitor based in the Mumbai of 1920s. The first book in this series is called A Murder at Malabar Hill. This was previously also published as Widows of Malabar Hill. So if you are looking for this book, you may find it under two different titles although the story remains same. Speaking of impulsive picking up of books, that decision is very often driven by the cover page of the book. And so, uh, let us take a look at the cover page of this book, a portal that leads us to stories within. I always find that the cover pages for books based in India have a typical flavor to them when they are designed and published outside India. There is a need for such books to play up the exotic factor for the international reader. And this book is not an exception. It has an eye-catching, vibrant, strong color scheme showing a hill town and a young woman in the foreground. The woman is featured wearing a sari with an old-fashioned full-sleeve blouse and the profile of the face features brown skin black hair and a prominent hooked nose. This is how the main character is described in the book. Later versions of this book in various reprints feature the same uh, theme. So there is a young Indian woman draped in a Parsi Gujarati sari, but the background is changed to feature various iconic monuments from the Mumbai of 1920s. The cover pages are quite attractive and will entice readers to at least pick up the book and check the premise. Now moving on to the storyline. The story is told in two threads, the past and the present. In the present, we meet Parveen Mistri, a young Parsi woman in Mumbai of 1921. She is the only woman solicitor in Mumbai working in the practice with her father Jamshedji Mistri. On this morning, there is a strange man lurking outside their offices at the Mistri house and the past comes haunting Parveen. Only a few years ago, Parveen was a young woman of 18 and an only female student at the government law college. In spite of being a bright student, she was facing harassment from fellow students and prejudice from the faculties just because she was the only female student studying law. One day, the pranks go too far and she decides to quit. On the same fateful day, she meets a young man called Cyrus Sodawala who has come from Kolkata to Mumbai in search of a bride. Cyrus pursues Parveen and young infatuated Parveen ends up marrying him in spite of her family's reservations about the match. Married life in Kolkata is not so bad to start with, but the Sodawalas are fairly orthodox in the way they live. Parveen does not find the support of the family when she wants to go back to college to pick up her studies again. Matters come to head when Parveen finds out that her husband has continued seeing prostitutes in spite of being married, that her in-laws have been asking her father for money, and that 
she now has a venereal disease when she confronts cyrus about this he attacks her and so parveen comes back to mumbai battered and bruised her family supports her and the father pleads her case for legal separation under parsi law however divorce is not an option for her so here she is not yet 20 and scarred for life but with her family's support she takes a big step and goes to oxford to study law hoping that by the time she came back the past would be put behind her and so we meet her in 1921 when she is working on a case for estate settlement for a deceased man called omar farid he was a rich mill owner and has left three wives and four children behind him now a man called faisal mukri is dealing as the head of the household as the wives are pardanashins parveen has a few questions about the estate and so she visits malabar hill where the three widows razia sakina and mumtaz live with their children as parveen treads her way through the intriguing worlds of this house secluded from the rest of the world she finds that there is much more in the background to this estate settlement and if it was not for parveen being a woman and hence allowed to talk to the widows a lot could have gone wrong this is a difficult road as it is but it becomes worse when faisal mukri is murdered not only that soon after razia's daughter amina disappears and parveen herself is kidnapped one night can she survive and protect herself and her clients so as you can guess from the storyline the book is a rich detailed narrative that spans over a few years that are life changing and formative for the character of parveen both timelines themselves could have been a book but when interwoven here it becomes such an interesting account there is enough intrigue and thrill in both narratives where you enjoy the description of the daily life of the people living in that era but also keep wondering as to what's next to come one of the most appealing factors of the book to me was how it highlights the multicultural landscape of india the author describes the history of parsis their daily lives attire diet religious practices and thought patterns through parveen's life she also shows us the world they inhabited in mumbai of early 20th century filled with old grand buildings and quieter life through the farid family she shows us how the wealthy muslims of the time lived in through parveen's friend alice She gives us glimpses of the English officers stationed in Mumbai. There are also snippets about the freedom movement and Parveen's sympathy for this cause. All the characters are lovingly detailed here. As the author says, Parveen's character was inspired by India's earliest women lawyers, Cornelia Sorabji of Pune. the first woman to read law at oxford and the first woman to sit the british law exam in 1892 in meetan tata lam of bombay who also read law at oxford and was the first woman admitted to bombay bar in 1920 the women of today enjoy so many advantages at education in work front and yet some of these struggles are still there today The battle for equality is fought on so many fronts that it is never ending. Another plus for the book is for the lovers of law. The book takes us through details of Parsi law, Hindu law, and Muslim law as it applied to families in those times. It is worthwhile learning how the rights and responsibilities of family members have changed from those times. By the way, the word Parveen means star in three languages: Persian, Arabic, and Urdu. And it is her story essentially, but through her life's journey, the author shows us so many facets of human lives. 
While you admire Parveen for her courage, it is hard not to fall in love with her family either. Her parents support her in many ways, through good decisions and bad ones. And it is by observing her family than her in-laws' family that Parveen learns that no matter how unpleasant a person might be, there would always be those who had raised him and saw a different aspect of him. You may know that the Parsis came to the western shores of India in Gujarat many centuries ago, and their culture has blended with that of Gujarat. There are glimpses of that in the language and custom here in the book as well. I found that some of the proverbs are very similar to those in Gujarati. For example, Gujarati Utavde na pake amba becomes mangoes will not ripen if you hurry them. As Praveen gets more involved in her case for the widows at Malabar Hill, she also sees how their life is so different from hers. They do not leave the house and appear to be dependent upon others for even simple needs. And yet they are not so different when it comes to human nature. Jealousy and resentment were the running themes in this household of women. Precisely because of their wall and screens, people are curious to know everything about them. The boundaries communities drew around themselves seemed to narrow their lives. Together it was women and men, Hindus and Muslims or Parsis and everyone else. Although she has faced some violence in her married life, Parveen realizes that as a lawyer, she is going to have to face unpleasant events and characters which may even bring danger to herself. Parveen didn't think a murder investigation could be fast-paced. She felt as if she had just boarded a long-distance train. Who else would come on and where the journey would end was far from certain. The author does not glamorize the British rule in India of the time, but the British characters are mostly on the periphery, except for Alice. Alice and Parveen were very close at Oxford, but as they are both now placed in a different city, Parveen with a job and Alice at loose ends with too much free time on her hand, we see that the dynamics of their friendship also must change. They may still be great friends, but they need to find a way to reinvent their interactions as they navigate their way through the Mumbai of 1920s. I like the book for its positivity. The current trend in the world literature is to highlight the post-World War depression when it comes to the 1920s. But India had its own struggles at the time. And in the world of bleakness all around, there were people who were trying to break the barriers and find a purpose in their lives in spite of many personal struggles and challenges. So if you have a weekend to lose in to contemplating life of a young Indian woman through early 20th century, then this is the book for you. Take Reviews rating for this one is around 8 out of 10. If you have read other books by this author, please do let us know what you thought of them. If there are any other books based in India of those times, please do let us know and we will share our reviews on those with you. Thank you for listening.